Hey guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's go see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. This is a, this may be a treat or it may be a face pucker. <laughs> this is another one from Avery. Uh, this come in the beer, the massive beer mail package that Nate sent me. He sent me quite a few pumpkin beers and quite a few uh, sour beers. Uh, stuff that I hadn't reviewed before and I haven't done a whole lot of reviews on sour beers or wild ale beers if you will because I haven't quite got my palette or my arms around that style quite yet. Some of them are just way blows my palate out of my mouth. They're just so, so tart and sour it makes me just pucker up. And, and some of them aren't, aren't so bad so uh, I would consider myself a newbie in the uh, in the sour ale category or the lambic or tart beer category because I haven't experienced quite a few uh, are enough of those to to give a real good opinion and and I know a lot of these beers are just probably eight nine ten beers but they're not to me and I try to be as honest as and, and as fair as I, I can be uh, being a newbie on this style of beer uh, but it's, like I told you guys before on some of the other reviews that I did on these sour or wild ale beers as a kid I did not like tart candy or sour candy I just I was more into the sweeter stuff than the tart sour stuff. So, still that way as an old man, I'm still that way. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my arms around this style of beer. I want to, I want to, I want to be able to enjoy this style of beer. So, Nate, thanks again, brother, for sending me this one. Uh, this is Avery's Barrel Age Series 19 Rufus Corvus, and uh, it is considered a sour slash wild ale beer. This is a uh, low ABV, or not real low, but considering what Avery does, it's low to them. 6.83% alcohol by volume. And this was bottled on April 7th of 2014. And it's a barrel aged sour, sour ale. And this is number 19, like I said, series 19 on this particular uh, beer here. Let's get the commercial description on this. Uh... An artful and massively acidic blend of two major projects and further enhanced with several orphan barrels from the corners of our barrel aging cellar. So this is a blended ale. Uh, they, they put several different beers together to make this. All ale involved was barrel aged for a minimum of eight months and a maximum of 24 months. And that's why a lot of these beers, not necessarily this style, but barrel aged beers, are so pricey. If you consider uh, the space that these barrels take up, and they're aging them for eight months up to 24 months, that's two years that it's taking up that space there in the barrel. And that's even before it goes into the bottle. So it's a pricey uh, adventure to undertake as a craft brewer, because of the space those beers take up. And, and then the longer you leave it there, the more technically the beer costs over time. So I don't want this to be a 30 minute video, guys. So we're gonna get on with this one. Uh, food pairings for this style of beer. Uh, food pairing, cheeses, pepper, and Monterey, pepper jack, your more pungent cheeses, and uh, it says general salad. As of me, I don't drink beer with salad. Uh, I mean, if it's if I have beer with a meal and salads on the side, uh, that's fine. But I'm not a salad slash beer drinker. Uh, I'm a meat eater. I like steaks and chops and 
chicken and and all kind of spicy food, tacos and uh, everything. I like I like everything, but I'm just not considering myself. Well, if I'm gonna have a chef salad, bring me a beer to go with it. I, I'm not in that category, guys. That's not me. Uh, glass wire blue tulip, oversized wine glass. I'm gonna use a double glass for this one, guys. And this one says can be cellared uh, for a long period on the proper condition. It's only a six point two percent or six point two. 6.83 on this one. Almost 7%, not quite. A little bit more than uh, 6 and 3 quarters, but not quite to the 7. So it's going to keep for a little while. In order to keep for a year or two or three even. Uh, I don't know what would deter you from selling this, what's going to fade, since it's barrel aged from 8 to 24 months to start with. But I don't know if I'd be in the ballpark to age a 6.83% sour ale for 20 years. Just don't think that that would work out too well. Just my opinion. It might. It might be just damn tasty after 20 years. I don't know. Uh, let's get the cap off of this damn thing and get it in the glass. I've flapped my gums long enough. And this has got that silly ass foil on there. It comes off in little bitty pieces. So if I, if I can get this off without... Not much of a hiss on this. I mean, it just went... And that's all it was. So not a big carbonation on this beer. I mean... Wrap this full on there tight so it don't come off. And get it into the glass. I hope I enjoyed this one. 6.83%. Anyway, let's see what we get on the head pouring this down the center. A little bit of sediment in the bottom. Not really heavy. And I'm getting the sourness from here. I mean, I really am. Down an aggressive pour, about a half a finger of head, and it is a rich burgundy color, guys. I can see the bulb through it, but it is a rich red burgundy color. Almost looks like a wine in the glass if it wasn't for the head. Very nice. Very nice looking beer. And the head has already dissipated. It's just barely covering the top of the beer now. So let's get a nose on it and see what we got. Makes my body pucker up. I ain't even got it to my lips yet. That has got a strong, sour tartness to the smell. Cherries, dark berries. Big influence on the wine barrels. And it says barrel A. That's not bourbon barrel. I'm pretty sure it's... it's here, I mean, if I can read it here. I'm going to try to read this. I'm going to get my glasses on, guys, and read what's on the top of the bottle here. 85% ale aged in Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. 9% ale aged in Chardonnay barrels. 6% ale aged in Zinfandel barrels. So, three different kind of wine barrels that this beer has been aged in. So, heavy on the nose. Heavy wine barrel influence on the smell. Almost smells like a wine. I mean, it really does. This may really appeal to some wine drinkers. I mean, uh, of all the different uh, uh, wine barrels uh, that they've blended uh, the beer out of to produce this one, a lot of different wine characteristics in, the, in, in this beer, especially on the nose. I haven't even tasted it yet. Very sour, tart smell, heavy grapes, dark berry influence. That's what I'm getting on the nose. So let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, Nate. I do appreciate it, brother. Well, it's not a super puckering experience like I had the other day on that beer that we did uh, last week. Heavy grape influence on this beer from all the different wine barrels and blended ales that's come out of those wine barrels to produce this. Very dry. Very dry on the back end. Not too tart. Not too sweet. Not too sour. It ain't too sweet. It ain't sweet hardly at all. It's, it's a sweetness to it, but it's a tart sweetness.
really, it's really not bad, other than being super dry. Heavy, I've said this already a couple times, heavy grape and dark berry influence on this. That's what I'm getting on this beer. Not my style of beer, but I could see me drinking this with a meal, especially with a meal. Because of the dryness and the wine characteristics, a lot of people like to have wine with their dinner. This would be a good beer to have with a dinner. Not something that's going to be super hoppy or, or super chocolatey like a stout's going to be or an IPA is going to be. Something to sip on while you're having your meal uh, with a uh, strong wine uh, barrel influence. So let's let that warm up. I'm probably going to flap my gums for 10 minutes or so already and uh, see what it is, ends up being. I'm going to sip on this one. It'll probably take me about 45 minutes or so and uh, see where it ends up and see if uh, I'm a big fan at the end. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Been sipping on in here about 45 minutes or so. Kind of tasty. I mean, this would, to me, this would not be something I would just grab out of the fridge and and, and, and go outside and, and drink and all that. This, to me, would be a good pairing with a meal. A uh, lot of uh, dark cherries, grapes, uh, some darker fruit, uh, the bread of my CG that they use in, in these style of beers is definitely present. It's got that sour tartness to it, but it's not overly sour and not overly tart. So, a pretty decent beer uh, for somebody that's not into this style of beer. It's 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 pretty decent. Uh, definitely got a little bit of that woodiness from all the uh, the barrel aging that they're doing in these wine barrels. So, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of complex flavors, and I can see why uh, you, you might want to sell this one for a little while. Uh, so some of those could even come together a little bit better. Uh, decent beer, very decent. Uh, I enjoyed this one. Uh, not my particular style, like I say, but a, a, a nice beer to pair with a meal. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Let's do the final show. Very dry finish, like a uh, very reminiscent of a, of a dry wine that you would drink. A lot of stuff going on, like I said, with the dark cherries and the grapes and, and uh, some darker fruit maybe. Uh, the woodiness comes out from the barrel. And the Brettamyces yeast that they use in these sour ales is definitely present with that sour tartness, but it's not... Like I said, not overly sour, not overly tart. Very drinkable for somebody that doesn't drink this style of beer very often. So, I enjoyed it. It's, pre it's pretty tasty. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to wrap my arms around these style of beers before too long. Guys, I think it's an A beer. Uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely really tasty. Uh, definitely not like an IPA or like a bourbon barrel stout or a pills or anything else. These... These wild ales and sour uh, sour beers are are definitely an acquired taste, and hopefully I'm going to try to acquire it before too long. I've got a bunch of lambics downstairs that I've had for a long time that I've been dreading because I know what they're going to bring uh, reviewing them. So hopefully over the winter time we'll we'll drag some of them out and, and review some of them. So uh, decent beer. Uh, I might not be up to the category of giving it a, a 9 or a 10, even though it's probably considered a 9 or a 10 by a lot of people that drink this style of beer. Uh, I do think it's an A beer, so I'm going to give it to 8, which is the A-. Uh, it's got most of the information you need right on the bottle. Very tasty, very well-made beer. Uh, did enjoy it. Uh, hopefully I can wrap my arms around some of these beers before too long. Uh, there are a lot of different breweries that are producing this style of beer now, and uh, I would like to be able to enjoy them. So uh, let's go see what everybody else thinks. Let's go over to Rate Beer, I mean Beer Advocate, and Beer Advocate says 95, world class. If I was putting a numeric rating on it for me personally, just my opinion, uh, not being into this style of beer very long, uh, 
or had very many of them. Uh, I would probably give it a uh, 91, between 90 and a 91, maybe a 92 uh, tops. Because it's got the, uh, the date on the bottle and the ABV and it tells you what it is and, and all the different barrels it's been uh, uh, aged in. So, uh, pretty tasty. Uh, I did like it. So, thanks Nate. Thanks brother. And over to uh, Rake Beer. Rake Beer says overall 99 and 97 in the style. So pretty impressive numbers from those guys over there. So my 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 rating might be a little low because I am not uh, into this style quite yet and, uh, and and not experienced too many of these these beers to really appreciate it. So uh, if you think this beer is a 10, I would not argue with you one bit. Uh, uh, and, and if you're not into this style of beers, like a lot of my subs are hop heads like I am and, and like some of the darker beers or stout fans and stuff and they say, oh, how can you drink that stuff or, or, or are you just giving them that number? I'm, I'm just trying to be honest with you guys. I think it's an, a well-made awesome beer. Uh, not something that I would drink every day for sure, uh, but I did enjoy it and uh, I think it would pair well with the meal instead of just drinking it. Uh, just sitting around shooting the bull or, or sitting out on the deck uh, uh, like you would drink an IPA or a Pilsner or even a lawnmower beer. Uh, but it was tasty. Uh, hopefully one of these days uh, I may re-review -re some of these so that I've given uh, these scores to and might consider it to be a, a little bit better than the score that I've given it and yet again it, it, it might not. It, it's just a, it's just a where my palate is in this stage I'm drinking this style of beer. So, if you've had this one from Avery, uh, the Barrel Age Series 19, Rupus Corvus, let me know what you think, guys. Let's take that walk tomorrow and see what's in the fridge. See you then.